So Donald Trump went on Fox and Friends to discuss the Orlando terror attack, and he made a curious insinuation about President Obama. The president called for more gun controls. He also said it was terror, and he said it was a hate crime, but he did not say it was Islamic terrorism. And for that reason, you, sh you say he should quit. He doesn't get it, or he gets it better than anybody understands. It's one or the other, and either one is unacceptable. Uh, you know, this is a this is a mentality. This is a state, and you have thousands of shooters like this with the same mentality out there in this country, and we're bringing thousands and thousands of them back into this country, and into the country every year. We're allowing them to come into the country. You mean refugees? I'm talking about people coming in from Syria where we have no idea who they are. We have no idea as to paperwork, as to where they came from. This could be the all-time great Trojan horse. This could be, you know, the legend of the Trojan horse. This could, this could actually be it. I used to say it with a smile. I used to say maybe, you know, is it possible at the very early stages? And uh, the more and more, you know, thinking, of course, a thing like that could never happen. I'm starting to think it can happen because our politicians are so inept and so incapable. And our leadership, especially at the top, is just they don't know what they're doing. So he said it at the beginning there. Either Obama doesn't get it about radical Islam, I assume he's saying, or he gets it better than anyone understands. And he goes on to say, hey, maybe with these refugees. Trojan horse situation, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, many outlets have pointed out, hold on now, what are you insinuating? Uh, the Washington Post, among others, uh, questioned if Trump was insinuating that Obama is basically in cahoots with uh, Islamic terrorists. <laughs> and how did uh, Trump respond? He took away their press credentials. Wow, and I'm going to get to that in a second. But before I even get into that, like, I wasn't, uh, people were outraged about what he said here. This is Trump 101. It's almost expected from Trump to make insinuations like this. But I am not even mad at that part because anybody who knows what's going on in Syria and what's happening with the rebels, they know that indeed the Obama administration, uh, whether on purpose or not, they are backing Islamists and jihadists. I mean, we, I don't know how many stories we've covered, but the overwhelming majority of the rebels now uh, in Syria, they are Islamists and jihadists. Saudi Arabia props them up. We've given arms and funding. We praise this moderate rebel who died when this moderate rebel had praised Osama bin Laden on the record. These, these guys are deeply theocratic. And because we don't like Assad and the Syrian government, because the Syrian government is aligned with Iran and Russia, we go, oh, we're just playing the geopolitical chessboard games. So we go, okay, if we got to lay in bed here with some shitty rebels who are basically... Some of them ISIS, some of them al-Nusra, which is al-Qaeda. We go, oh, okay, I guess we formed this terrible alliance. Fucking General Petraeus floated just flat out arming these people. Now, we've given them aid. Our ally Turkey has given them arms and aid. But they're like, yeah, no, totally, let's arm al-Qaeda. So I'm not even outraged at the insinuation that perhaps they're in bed with jihadists and Islamists. They are! Now, they're not doing it because, whoa, we want them to take over the West. They're doing it because they want it for a geopolitical, uh, imperialistic game that we're playing with Russia, where we want more control in this vital region in the world. That's why they're doing it, so it's not to, whoa, try to take down the West. But that's why I'm not really even mad at the insinuation. What I'm mad about is the response. When the Washington Post runs a headline on this, Trump goes, you're done. That's it. You're not allowed to, to cover my campaign anymore with the campaign. Whoa, 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 whoa. And there's more, too. Quote, He's also banned The Huffington Post, BuzzFeed, The Daily Beast, Univision, Fusion, Mother Jones, Politico, and The National Review. Guys, th those are publications that are left, right, and center. He's just banned them. His team has also placed severe restrictions on journalists who do receive credentials, often barring reporters from leaving the designated press pen. Well, there you go again. So... This, pro this, to me, is probably the most overlooked aspect of how disastrous a Trump presidency would be. He's deeply authoritarian, and he's deeply authoritarian in ways that could cripple the Constitution and the First Amendment. So, we've covered before, he sued Bill Maher over a joke. He also threatened to sue The Onion over uh, a an article that they wrote as well. It was satire, obviously, it's The Onion. Who does that? Who the fuck does that? 
In a speech, he casually said, we're going to, quote, open up our libel laws. And he goes on to explain, well, all these things that are dishonest, we're going to sue them, and we're going to be able to win massive amounts of money. Well, hold on now. Do you really trust Donald Trump to be the ultimate arbiter of what is fair and unfair? No, any story against him that is just against him that he doesn't like, he's just going to say, oh, well, now I'm going to sue you. I'm going to open up the libel laws. I'm going to try to bankrupt you because you said something about me that I don't like. So, no, it's not about, oh, there's actual libel or slander. It's about, hey, I want to be able to shut down people, censor people who disagree with me. To the point where now he's literally saying, you're not, I'm not allowing you to follow my campaign. You're not getting press credentials, even though you're the Washington fucking Post. Now, I have big issues with the Washington Post. I thought they were massively biased in favor of Hillary Clinton and against Bernie Sanders, because they were. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that your response to that is, I will now dismiss you and censor you and say you're not allowed to be a press outlet, that's fucking fascism. That's crazy. So that's the angle of the story that's really, really devastating is that you have a guy here who's promising to not give a shit about freedoms that have made America, America. A guy who doesn't care about free expression and free protest and freedom of speech. And what's so funny is that in some circles he's being upheld as this, you know, the last beacon of free speech and free expression in the Constitution. Yeah, only if, it, only if it's his free speech and his free expression. If it's free speech or free expression or free press for anybody else, no, if he doesn't like it, he's going to literally shut you down. He, again, he sued people over fucking jokes. So he's not, you know, somebody fighting the, the PC social justice warriors. When people say stuff he doesn't like, he is the PC social justice warrior. So, th this is something that is devastating, and this deserves much more coverage, because this is deeply un-American.